All right, so um, for the benefit of doubt, in case someone perhaps would watch this later on, I just want to introduce um, who we are and what we've been doing. So um, this is the PhD Community Initiative um, team. And um, we were engaged by the city of Kenston in September 2019 to work on um, the shortage of family physicians in the city of Kenston. So since September 2019, and we've been working as a team, and then you can see the names of our team members. We are five in a team, and our mentors are Margo Patterson and then Edel Ibrahim. So um, yeah, this report will just go straight into looking at what we have gathered so far as a team. Um, the mission we started with and then the results or findings that we have at the moment. Can I have the next slide? Yeah, so um, what we received from the city of Kingston, the mission that we were taxed with was basically twofold. And we were asked to determine the number of family physicians registered in Kingston who actually practice family medicine. Um, as we all know, the number one call to um, the mayor's office of the city of Kingston is how do I get a family doctor? So there's been a long waiting list of um, residents in Kingston um, seeking to be attached to a family physician. And people have you know, sent a lot of um, reports about how difficult and frustrating it is. Um, there's been also a health data and uh, health reports on surveys going around that um, there's a high number of people who have been attached, but um, we've also realized that being attached to a family physician doesn't necessarily mean that you have access to the family physician when you need healthcare. So, um, like I said, the two main fold, the two main uh, mission that this team was tagged, well, was we are taxed with, was to determine the number of family physicians who actually practice. And family medicine in Kingston, and then to also determine the number of unattached patients who are currently living in Kingston. Next slide. Yeah, so um, in order to address these two main um, project aims, we had to collect sources from certain institutions. So we decided to um, collect data on the list of registered family physicians in Kingston from the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario, that's a CPSO. And we also sought to obtain um, publicly accessible data from Statistics Canada concerning the demographics of the city of Kingston. And then we also obtained previous reports on uh, family physicians in Kingston. These reports, for example, were commissioned by Petco and um, the city of Kingston as well. And then we also sought to obtain um, emergency room utilization data from the South East LEN. So um, basically our main institutional data for this project were from the CPSO, Statistics Canada, previous reports from uh, the city of Kingston concerning this project, then emergency room utilization data. Can I have the next slide, please? So in approaching this project, um, we, like I've previously perhaps hinted, we first began by reviewing the previous reports and we realized there was a consistency um, and I go, like there's a consistency in, in the information that was presented concerning the previous reports on this issue. For example, um, we realized that for a very long time, uh, like initially in 2006, when this issue began, um, the, there was an ad hoc committee that submitted an application to the Ministry of um, Health to have the Kingston designated as an underserved area. And then after the application was submitted, um, the, the ministry rejected um, the application on the basis that Kingston had more family, like full-time family physicians 
and also the ratio that was used um, was like indicated that we had an oversupply of family physicians. So um, later on, the, there were more you know, um, projects on this issue to determine the uh, methodologies that is used to, to uh, designate a particular area as underserved or um, high need or non high need. So we kind of reviewed the reports and then we found that um, there are actually, you know, consistencies in the information that is presented that yes, the number of attached, um, the number of unattached patients are increasing. And then also the, um, the methodologies that are being used by the ministry versus the Southeast Lane kind of brings a complicated understanding of whether um, Kenston should be designated as a uh, high need area for family physicians or non high need area for family physicians. And then secondly, we conducted an in-depth interview with the family physician, that's Dr. Michael Green. And um, through that interview, we also realized that there are certain health policy perspectives regarding this issue in the sense that there are certain restrictions that are placed on the recruitment of family physicians that also you know, complicates the issue. We also analyzed the registry of family physicians from the CPOs website. And uh, we also analyzed ER utilization data um, for the period 2003, 2008, and then 2015, 16, and then to 2018 and 19. And then lastly, we reviewed academic and non-academic literature on the search aid of family physicians. So basically these are the main approach we used in arriving at the conclusions we are going to deliver today. Next slide, please. Okay, so we are to look at the Kingston demographics. We looked at the latest census data for Kingston, and that's from 2016, and it's publicly available on the StatsCan um, website. Uh, in 2016, uh, the population demographics stood at, at for Kingston. Uh, we had 15% of the population aged 14 and under, 66 between 14 and 64, and 19% um, aged 65 and above. And we find that Kingston has an aging population. The median age uh, since uh, 2011 has shifted from 40.3 in 2011 to 41.9 in 2016. And I expect that it's higher even now for 2020. Slide. Uh, based on previous studies uh, on health care expenditure in Canada, we find that those aged in the 65 and above age group tend to spend more on health care since they've got more chronic illnesses and, and more whole, complex health care needs. On average, uh, people spend, age over 65, spend 185% of the national average, which is 6,299 versus 11,600 for those age 65 and above. So this means that they also have more visits to the family physician, which demands more time. So based on, on the population statistics for 2016, we also looked at the growth rate, uh, population growth rate for Canada from about 1960 to 2020. And we projected an average and using that average, we should have an, a population in Kingston of about 130,500. And if we add students to that population, we should have about 160 people plus or minus. And based on these healthcare needs of uh, those age 65 and above, we assumed that um, each senior represents 1.85 people. And if we factor that in, we get an effective population of 184,000 that demands services from family physicians. Slide. Then we looked at the uh, residency status of 
the population of Kingston. 85% is non-immigrants, while the remaining 15% is made up of immigrants, refugees, and temporary residents. And um, these, the non-permanent residents include those who are on work permit and study permits. 95.5% of the population speaks English, and 3.5% are French-speaking, only French-speaking. 0.4% speaks both French and English, and 0.5% does speaks neither English nor French. Slide. So next we looked at the data that's on the CPSO website and uh, based on their workplace. So if you go on the CPSO website, you can find information on the primary place of work for the physician the year they graduated and all other information like restrictions and all that and any specializations that they have and other workplaces that they um, work at. So 50% based on that information using the primary uh, work address, we found that 50% are in independent practices. So these are like single practitioners. No, they don't have like a family health team 10% of those registered uh, as providing services in Kingston are based outside of Kingston. Their practices are outside Kingston. Now, there was even one who had an uh, address in Switzerland. And of those, um, the top three employers are Queens, the Queens Clinics, Kingston General Hospital, and the Canadian Forces. And um, as we go further, uh, of those top three employers, the Queen's Clinics are the ones that provide uh, service to the public. Kingston General and Canadian Forces are not considered as providing um, service to the public. Slide. So based on the CPSO data, we had 295 families physicians, which if you take that, it implies a physician to population ratio of one is to 624. So it might seem like we have a lot of family physicians to start off with. And of those family physicians, 15% are aged over 65. So we took 65 as the age at which one can choose to retire, though they may continue practicing. And 20% of those 295 of those 295 uh, family physicians will be 65 in the next 10 years. So we, in the next 10 years, we're looking at 35% or 103, uh, roughly, family physician will be 65 or older. Next slide. And then, so again, looking, we also compared this data from the CPSO uh, with what is in the Health Force Ontario um, database. Uh, comparing to see which ones are the active family physicians. So we subtracted those who are based in a hospital, uh, Canadian forces, walk-in clinics, um, specialized practices, uh, and so on. And we ended up with um, 131 family physicians, which have a median age of 48. So this also means that most of our doctors are, are senior. And again, looking at the ages of these, we have 16% who are already age 65 and above, and 22% will be reaching 65. And so we're looking at about 50 of those 170 family physicians will be age 65. So means mental planning needs to take this into consideration. Uh, for staffing needs for Kingston in the next 10 years. Hey, just a question, sorry, before you go on. Um, yep. uh, there's a 170 active um, number uh, that you have in the last bullet point, but in, higher up you have 131 active family physicians. So what's, which is the 100, what is the 170 referring to? Okay, or, so... Or, the 170, when you look at, um, when you match those with the Health Force Ontario and you remove all those who are in specialized practices and 
hospitals, Canadian forces, all those that are not considered active family physicians, uh, you end up with 170. But not all of the 170 are practicing full time. So if you consider oh, okay. that they're not full time, you effectively have 131 uh, family physicians who are practicing for active. Okay, good. Okay, so that, that clarifies. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so and then looking at the active family physicians, most of them are in independent practices. And again, we looked at their age distributions and um, most of the senior family physicians have independent practices. And this presents a concern uh, in that um, this model, uh, most likely the fee for service, uh, paid um, the fee for service model. And a lot of the upcoming young physicians are reluctant to practice using this model. And so they might be very difficult to replace in the coming years. And of those 41% will, um, will be of the age 65 and above in the next 10 years. So we're looking at quite a significant um, number of active family physicians who are going to be leaving the workforce soon, potentially, yeah, That's right. So uh, this looks at all the family physicians on the CPSO database. And based on that, we found 111 full-time, 58 are part-time. So the part-time are those who have more than one practice registered. They're working for more than one practice. And on average, we found that they have 35% availability for Kingston and then uh, the non-practicing, which includes all those specialized um, services, Canadian forces, faculty, etc., they make up 126 of the 295 from the CPSO database. Okay, slide. Okay, so I just mentioned the 35% availability for the part-time, and uh, this gives us a full-time equivalent of 131 family physicians using this full-time equivalent and the effective population that we have in Kingston when we factor in the students, because we included the uh, family physicians who provide services to the colleges, uh, St. Lawrence, Queens, and as active family physicians, and therefore those students who are receiving services from these physicians are counted in the population that requires um, service. And so we get an, uh, an effective uh, family physician to population ratio of one is to 1,405, which is above the one is to 1,380 that the Ministry of Health and Long Term Care uses as a benchmark for uh, adequate staffing of family physicians. Right. And then we also looked at the language uh, demographics of the family physicians. We found that um, Eighteen percent of the family physicians speak French, and there are more French-speaking doctors than uh, female ones. Uh, though we have more female family physicians who are active than male. Slide. Okay, so I'm going to take over talking about determining unattached patients now. Um, Populations without family physicians are referred to here as unattached, but it's really uncertain in determining an accurate uh, definition of the population who are properly attached to their family physician uh, when they're needed. Uh, for instance, a patient may be attached to their family physician after moving to Kingston and their family physician is a very long distance away, uh, but they would still be counted as attached. But And also maybe they have a family physician here, but a lot of uh, people report not being able to access their family physician in a timely manner, so to call them attached may be inaccurate. Um, previously, the Kingston Economic Development Corporation was engaged by the city of Kingston to reevaluate Kingston's access to family physicians. And this report uh, compared Kingston to other communities in the southeastern Lynn and found that Kingston had the highest number of uh, unattached patients and the third number of patients who'd seen who'd been seen by uh, older family physicians. Uh, th there's a lot of uncertainty around what 
how many unattached patients there are in Kingston, because there's been many other health care uh, service reports commissioned by the Ministry of Health, and they they range. Uh, so, for instance, from anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000, and uh, some other reports which are unfounded can be anywhere from 15 to uh, uh, 33,000 uh, unattached patients. So, what we decided to do was look towards utilization data instead of self-report data. So all of these previous reports were using data uh, that was self-reported by patients on their attachment status. However, what we've done is access uh, the Southeastern Lens uh, utilization data from emergency rooms. So as it turns out, emergency rooms don't actually increase in their um, use by people who are unattached based off the literature it seems that unattached patients tend to use things like walk-in clinics more, but not actually use things like um, emergency rooms at much higher rates. So um, what this does is it makes it a very, very useful population data that's collected. Uh, so for instance, we have this data from 2015 to 2019 that shows that there was an increase of 1.9% in the number of unattached, in the number of attached patients who were using emergency room data in uh, Ontario hospitals, and that's for uh, people in Kingston, residents of Kingston. However, the unattached patients increased from 2015 to 2019 by 27 percent. So it's a fairly drastic increase in comparison to the attached patients. Um, if we take this data for the 2019 year, what we see is that 10.2% of individuals who access ERs in Ontario are unattached. So they report when they access um, ERs and they live in Kingston, 10.2% are unattached. Um, and if we take that and compare it to uh, our population here in Kingston, that would mean that we have a bit of a higher rate than previous estimates have said. So if we look towards previous estimates, they may say 3,000 individuals, but if 10.2% of individuals in Kingston are unattached, that would mean somewhere around 13,000 individuals in Kingston. And just to give you a idea, that would actually mean that the Leon Center, which right here in Kingston, you could fit double the amount of people and it, it seats 6,000 people. So that's how many people would be theoretically unattached here in Kingston. Uh, in comparison, we also have students here in Kingston which may be needed to be taken into account. Um, so here at Queens, we have 25,000 students and you may think like, oh, those students have access to healthcare in other places and they're transient and only here during their school term. However, 27% of, 27 of the 25,000 students uh, are graduate, postgraduate medicine and second degree students in uh, Queens. So these are students who are not transient. They are here year round and uh, would most likely be accessing healthcare here all year. Uh, so they would need to be seeking their primary care in the local Kingston area. And in addition to that, 11.9% of undergraduate students, which comes up to about 2,000, uh, are international, and 27% of graduate students are international as well, uh, which means that we have even more students who are not going home to receive their health care needs and would need to look for primary care here as well. And the same goes for St. Lawrence uh, College here in Kingston. 16% of their population is international, so that's another 1,000 students. Uh, who would probably be seeking primary care here in Kingston. So if we take into account the 10.2% estimate of unattached patients and apply that to Queen students, we would actually be ranking up our amount of unattached students to about 14,000. So it would be a little bit higher. Unattached patients, not just students. So um, conflicting, there are conflicting figures on the number of unattached patients and active physicians here in Kingston. That's a big takeaway for us and a big obstacle that we found. Uh, the 
active physicians is particularly frustrating because you would think that these regulatory bodies would actually have a fairly regulated way of deciding how many active physicians are currently operating. But what we see is a lack of cooperation between the regulatory bodies. So for instance, the CPSO and the Ministry of Health in the Southeastern Lynn may all have different numbers. Um, and also, it's all, one of our major obstacles has been that there is relevant data for this uh, existing currently. If you look to the CPSO, we requested some of this data. They do have some of it, but not all of it is actually available for the use of research. So even though it's out there, it can't be accessed to answer this question necessarily. Um, and thank you, Lindsay. Um, I would be going from here till the end of our presentation. So given all the constraints and challenges we had during our project, we, we were able to conclude some of our points based on our research and data analysis. So the first point is that utilization of data. So we, we consider the data such as emer emergency data during our analysis and found out that, um, that unattached patients were uh, higher than previously estimated reports and platforms uh, because these reports and platforms uh, were, have not used the data uh, of emergency data such as such we did for our, for our analysis. And the, the other point which we, uh, which we experienced was that uh, uncertainty attached um, uh, given, the, given the patients are attached to uh, uh, physicians, we found that, that that does not mean that they're, they're accessible uh, because, because of the, the nature of the physicians we have. Some are part-time, some of, uh, some of, uh, some of our young, some of old, and some are perform less number of hours. So even though, the, uh, uh, even though a patient seems to be attached, but virtually he's, uh, he's unattached and he's not getting hold of his position anytime soon. The third point uh, was, we, was that the current acceptable physician to patient ratio is, like, uh, is most likely inaccurate. We came up with this point because uh, when, we, when we saw a lot of reports and analysis, they don't consider the um, students such as Queens and St. Lawrence uh, st student into their uh, consideration of the ratio. So, so we, we think that once you, you get considered these, these students and a lot more other uh, 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 lot more other people. So this ratio would be uh, represented in a different way. So uh, that's why we, we thought that the current ratio uh, represented in a lot of reports is, is not correct. And then during our project, we got the opportunity to meet Dr. Michael Green. Um, and he focused on the, uh, the role of health policies on physician recruitment as, as one of the obstacles we, we face. And, and he, he also emphasized on the role of Ministry of Health, which brings a lot of constraints and restrictions during the uh, recruitment of physicians, which is also a challenge when you're trying to, to uh, recruit a physician. Next. So yeah, given, um, uh, given all the slide, uh, given all the factors uh, which we discussed uh, uh, in our slide, there are still a lot of scope and, and possibilities in this project available, and we would try to recommend some of them to the future group who, who is whoever is going to work on this project. So one of them was identifying the full-time equivalent ratio of physicians and patients panel size. As we as as explained in our previous slides, that um, we don't consider the students and some other uh, some other in our in our panel size so most of the time we get inaccurate patients to physician ratio um, so we need to we need to dig deep and identify this panel this accurate panel size in order to 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 give come up with a uh, like come up with acceptable uh, physician to patient ratio and as moreover um, moreover establishing acceptable physician and patient ratio is the need of an hour, as, as described in our project. Uh, it includes uh, it includes the recruitment of physicians also. So, and the the other thing is that um, during our project, we we understood that uh, 
we realize basically that it's, it's important to acknowledge the factors contributing to the issues, including the policies, as mentioned by Dr. Michael Green during our interview. And in order to address these issues at hand, we need to develop a successful strategies to elevate in, inadequate physician supply to the city of Kingston. Thank you.